Welcome back to Chamber Exchange, the TV show. My name is Tim Murray, President and CEO of the Worcester Regional Chamber of Commerce. I want to thank our sponsors who helped make the show happen, which is the Worcester Railers Hockey Club and Bank Hometown. Uh, thrilled to have with us in this segment Tony Economo, who's a, a broker associate realtor at Remax Advantage and former Worcester City Councilor, uh, and Tim Garvin, President and CEO of the United Way of Central Mass and longtime partner with the Chamber. Gentlemen, welcome. Thanks for having us. Always great to be with you. Well, you know, oftentimes, you know, when there are issues in the community and oftentimes issues that arrive uh, or that come up in our community uh, arrive here because of things happening around the globe. And that's what makes Worcester such an interesting place that something can happen around the globe and, and within days or weeks is a reverberation here in Worcester uh, as a gateway city and a place that has traditionally welcomed people uh, from, from across the globe. Uh, one of those situations is in Afghanistan with so many Afghans uh, who were supporting and helping uh, American military and, and others uh, while they were deployed there uh, have been given special status to come to the United States, uh, these uh, evacuees. Uh, a number of groups and organizations have mobilized, not surprisingly the United Way, uh, working with Accentria and the REAC, which is the Refugee uh, Refugee and Immigrant Assistance Center, and That's its right. acronym is REAC, R-I-A-C, to help you know, these evacuees and their families relocate, find housing. Tim, what are you doing? And then we can talk about the, the partnership with the Chamber. So <coughs> it's always great to be at the Chamber, and, and I will always start by saying it was 101 and a half years ago that our United Way got started in the Chamber. And so this is a, it's the longest relationship we have. Um, in late August, when the evacuation was happening off of the airbase and refugees from Afghanistan were, were needed to find a place to go, and it's exactly as you said, we can all read about the Taliban and we can read about what's happening, and all of a sudden it's affecting us. Um, and within days, uh, a s number of people started mobilizing, and as always happens here in Worcester, the phone lines got hot, and we said, let's come together. The city manager and the mayor, um, Mike Angelini of Bowditch, Accentria, REAC, the United Way, Greater Worcester Community Foundation, Joy Guru Humanitarian, um, Warner Fletcher, and all of the family foundations. And we came together and said, what are we going to do? And, and we cascaded down. What are we doing about housing? How are we welcoming, supporting, and settling? How are we ensuring that every refugee, every person from Afghanistan, who assisted and supported our country while our country was in Afghanistan has a safe, welcoming place and that they will be able to retain their culture and also fit into our great city of Worcester. I found out that, in fact, the first formal welcoming happened in 1915 when Armenian refugees came here. And, in fact, there's a tree in front of City Hall. Right. You were probably there for the planting of it. Right. You probably paid for the planting <laughs> of it. And we've been doing this for now 100 and 107 years on a very formal basis. Right. And, and as you mentioned, you know, I mean, these are American men and women who were uh, you know, deployed in Afghanistan. And then you listen to them talk about they w would not have been able to do the job that would, would have been less safe, less secure, if it were not for these Afghans and stepping up to provide a whole myriad of different roles and supporting American troops and personnel. And so these individuals and, and their families, uh, by extension, put themselves out there uh, to protect Americans while they were in Afghanistan. And you know, I think we've all re realized that it's our responsibility now to return that favor and welcome them. But one of the challenges that you mentioned is housing. How do we, and, and that's where Tony, uh, you, conversation started with the chamber, with our chamber member businesses, many of them developers, uh, property owners. How do we activate that network and, and come together? And Tony, maybe you could talk about you know, the role that you're playing in terms of engaging landlords, working with the group, and how somebody out there who might have an apartment or a house uh, that, you know, that they want to help, we, we need to find these families housing. Sure, Tim, thanks. Um, you know, with, with the, your great leadership and Tim Garvin's great leadership at United Way, that um, it's come to me, to, um, and it's been asked of me to, to assist um, in finding uh, rental units to house, house these families. And, um, I've been able to do that and able to work with other groups, uh, the realtor community, the developer community here in the city, identify units, identify landlords who are willing to work with us um, and try to get a, um, an inventory, so to speak, of what is available and how we can 
access these units and place these families within these units. It's worked out very well as so far. Um, I really have to give a lot of credit to Accentria and REAC who are, you know, God bless them, they are working almost 24-7. Um, and it, uh, I'll be honest, from my standpoint too, you're with a family, you see the young kids, you know, the, the innocence yeah. that these young kids have and how can you not help? And I think, to go back to your original story, that's one of the great things I think about the city of Worcester. It always rallies and it always steps up to the plate and becomes a leader um, yeah. in the community in general. Right, because if we go back f further enough in our own families, there was a similar situation Absolutely. at some point. Absolutely. It was somebody welcoming or helping or assisting that played a role in, uh, you know, in our families you know, getting established here. And, that, and that's really important. Um, but the thing is, you know, th there's financial, so those prospective landlords that are out there, there's dollars now to help those families transition. <coughs> The fact that they were uh, helping American troops while they were in Afghanistan shows there's a whole range of skill sets. So we anticipate, and that's another area where the chamber is working, right. to help find them employment and make connections. So as they get here and transition in, get the kids settled, we can help qu them quickly find work. But in the meantime, there are dollars to help uh, a landlord out there that you know, can ensure that they'll get paid, the bills will get paid as the family transitions. And if, if I can touch on that point, I think that's an important point, and that's a, one of the points I try to stress is that <coughs> There, there is financial backing to make this happen, to make it successful for the families and for the landlords. So if you are a landlord out there and you do have a, a vacant unit or an upcoming vacant unit, um, please don't hesitate to reach out. The best way to reach me is just give me a call on my cell, 508-868-2759. I'll get right back to you. Um, I'll let you know how the process works and we can get these families um, into homes um, so they can restart their lives. They, you know, as you both have mentioned, they've been so helpful to, to the United States, the U.S. military in Afghanistan. Um, it's time for us to, to give back to them. And that, those dollars that to help those family transition, those are all the individuals, Tim, you mentioned at the outset that help step up, assemble, get in the room and, and commit to the dollars to help these families transition for, for a course of a year. Tim, this city is amazing in its compassion and its collaboration. And it's what we've always, always known. The family foundations, the philanthropic community, the businesses, the individuals. We have more than 120 people who have donated. Smallest donation, $25. The largest individual donation from a, from a single person, $25,000. That's serious money. Some $100,000 donations. The, the Fish Family Foundation has made a challenge match and we've raised $50,000 already in that challenge that they've matched and are now continuing. The George I. Alden Trust, just so many companies, so many businesses, um, and, and our institutions, UMass Medical School, the Chan Medical School, UMass Memorial, everybody is rallying together saying, what can we do and what can we do to help? The Worcester Islamic Center, you and I both went there a week ago Friday. There must have been 150 people who were there to welcome the arrivals from Afghanistan. And when you talk about REAC and Accentria, sometimes they aren't able, even able to come to our meetings because mm. they're driving out to the airport to pick up a family of nine at nine o'clock at night and to make sure they have a safe place to go. And so our work has been to make sure the funds are there so that everybody will be taken care of. And, and, and the faith-based communities, I mean, just that Blessed Sacrament Parish just this past week, you know, Father Trainer was talking about yeah. the partnership with Trinity Lutheran to support and raise money and, and support a family. So the whole community, to your point, Tim, is, is stepping up. But that housing is absolutely critical. We don't want these families stuck in hotels. If we can get them into housing, we can transition the kids into schools, work on the job transitions and, and, and locations where the skills fit. So if there are, you know, landlords out there, they can contact, yeah. what's the number again? Again, 508-868-2759. Please give me a call. Um, it's imperative that we work together to get this done. And, it, and it's for a worthy cause. And I will say this, they're proud, they're a proud people. And um, I know you won't be disappointed with your, with your future tenants. Yeah. I mean, now, we, we have a name for this, Tim, and I think you might have been the one well, who coined the name. Yeah, well, we, we, I think Operation Welcome is what we, we, we're calling it, and it's that, that you know, collective effort to make sure that these families uh, are, are, are transitioned and welcomed and, and, and thanked for what they did for our American troops right. when they were in harm's way. So uh, as the holiday season, let's all step it up 
uh, and do everything we can for these families. And, and thank you for what you guys are doing. These days, you've got your hands full in life. That's why we help you bank simply and securely with tools like Face ID and Touch ID. It's why we make it easy to make purchases on the go and get cash back while you're at it. Why we help you quickly deposit checks wherever you are. And it's why we lend a hand with sending and receiving money right from your phone. So even when you're on the move, you can manage your finances. Bank Hometown. Unlock your potential. Being associated with the Railers and being a part has been awesome, and it's been a lot of fun. I think my students' initial reactions is my favorite part. Uh, they, their eyes get really wide, and they're in awe. And then you have the excitement of hockey, and you have that anticipation in the air, you know, the crowd getting into it. It's, it's fun. Worcester. A city with heart, history, and promise. A hub of innovation in life sciences, education, and healthcare. Home to multi-generational families, first-generation citizens, and next-generation baseball and hockey greats. Home to great parks, world-class museums, theaters, and restaurants. Worcester, the place to visit, to invest, and to call home.